Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Eat the Blocks. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can become an advanced user of Ganache CLI. For example, I'll show you how you can customize the number of unlock address created by Ganache. I'll also show you how you can synchronize Ganache with MetaMask by specifying a seed phrase and many other cool stuff. All right, so let's jump to the terminal and we're gonna start by some simple options. So let's say that I want to customize the host and the port under which Ganache runs. So I can do this with two flags. So I specify Ganache CLI and for a custom host, then you use the H flag and you specify your host. So it can be, for example, a domain name, my domain name.com or it can be an IP address, but by default, it is localhost. So 127.0.0.1. And you specify the port, you use the P flag, then you specify the port. So instead of 8545, which is the default, can be any number you want, so 5000 or any other port. Then there are some other options for customizing the blockchain. So for example, if you want to specify the hard fork that you are using, so you can use the K flag plus the name of the hard fork. So by default, this is the latest hard fork which is used. So currently this is Petersburg. But if you want to test smart contract on other version of Solidity, you can use other fork such as Constantinople. And next year, when the next hard fork of Ethereum will happen, then the default hard fork will become Istanbul. You can also specify the network ID with the I flag. So you can put whatever number you want. So 700 or whatever you want. Then to specify the gas price, you use the G flag plus the gas price in a way. So probably this is gonna be a huge number. By default, this is 20 quay. So this can be very useful if you want to simulate the actual gas price of the real network. Then you can also specify the block gas limit with the L flag. And you need to specify this as an hexadecimal number. So the gas block limit is a little bit tricky. This is not the same thing as the gas limit for a transaction. So the sum of all the gas used in each transaction in a block must not exceed the block gas limit. So on Ethereum currently, it's roughly 8 million something, if I'm not mistaken. But for some reason, the default for Ganache is 4.7 million. So it does not reflect actually the real production conditions. So if you want to make your Ganache environment resemble more closely mainnet, then you can customize this flag. Next, you can also customize the block time. So the block time is the average time that it takes for a block to be mined in the blockchain. On a mainnet, it's roughly 15 seconds, but on Ganache, it's zero second because there is a special option that is called auto mine that is activated by default. And with this option, every time Ganache receives a transaction, a new block is instantly mined. So the block time by default is zero, unless you specify this option like this and you give it the block time in seconds. So if you want to make it like in production, then you specify 15 seconds. So in most cases, you probably want to keep the block time at zero and not specify this option. But in some rare cases, it can be useful. So let's say that you want to test your user interface between the moment when a user send a transaction and the moment this transaction is actually mine. So on the mainnet, you will have approximately 15 seconds. So you probably want to show some sort of progress bar or loading screen to the user. But with the default block time of zero in Ganache, you'll never be able to test this visually. So in this case, this block time option might be quite handy. And the last option related to the blockchain is the time option. So with the time option, you can specify when the blockchain starts. And this can be very useful if you're testing time-dependent smart contract. 
So to customize this, you use the T flag and then you give the date according to the ISO 8061 format. So you can read more about this ISO format at this link, but basically with JavaScript, you can get this very easily with the date object and it will be a string that resembles something like this, for example. Next, I want to show you option to customize Ethereum addresses generated automatically by Ganache. So the first one is the number of address that is generated automatically. So you can customize this with the A flag. So by default, this is 10, but if you want more, then you just have to put another number here. Next, you can also customize the default amount of Ether that comes pre-funded for each of these address. So by default, this is 100, but if you want to have more Ether, then you just add more Ether for this option. Next, there is the deterministic option. So with this option, every time you start Ganache, it's going to use the same seed phrase to generate all the addresses. So this option is useful if you don't care about what is the seed phrase, but you just want to make sure that every time the address is generated will be the same. So if you don't use this option, all the accounts generated every time will be totally random and different. If you want to control how all the addresses are generated, then you can use the mnemonic option. So with this option, you're going to provide 12 words that will be used for the address generation. So it's going to be something like this, like color, car, bread, etc., etc. And this is especially useful if you want to synchronize Ganache CLI with MetaMask. So in this case, you will unlock your MetaMask account and you will reveal the seed phrase and you'll copy this and paste it for this option. And so from MetaMask, you'll be able to use the prefunded ether that was provided by Ganache CLI. It's also possible to generate these Ethereum addresses for any source of randomness. So in this case, use the S option and you can specify whatever you want here. And every time you change this, then addresses generated will be different. It's also possible to generate specific addresses by using a private key. So in this case, use the account option and you give it first the private key. So whatever your private key is. And then after a comma, you specify how much ether you want to be prefunded in this address. And you can keep going and add as many addresses as you want. Next, there is an option to modify the default behavior of Ganache. So by default, Ganache will unlock all the addresses that it generates. That means that anybody can send a transaction on behalf of these addresses without signing this transaction. So you don't need to know the private key of these addresses. And this is designed to make development easier. But sometimes you want to reproduce more accurately the real environment of mainnet. So on mainnet, of course, addresses are not unlocked and you do need to sign transaction. So if you want to reproduce this behavior, you can use the secure option or just dash n. And when you have this option enabled, you can individually unlock specific addresses by using the U flag. So you specify the address that you want to unlock or you can put a number and this will be the index of the addresses generated by Ganache. So if you put zero, this will be the first address generated by Ganache. If you put one, it will be the second one, two will be the third one, etc., etc. And the last option related to accounts is account keys path. And this allow you to save your Ethereum addresses along with the private keys in a file. All right, so that's it for the option related to Ethereum addresses. And I'm gonna show you a couple of other cool options. So the next one is the DB option and you specify a path to a directory where you want to store the state of the blockchain. When you start this option, if there is already a blockchain database in this directory, Ganache is going to use that to initialize its own blockchain. When you start Ganache with this option, if there is already a blockchain database in this directory, Ganache is going to use that to initialize its own blockchain. And so this is very convenient if you want to share your development environment with other developers who work on your project. Next, let's see how you can control the log output of Ganache CLI.
First, you can specify the verbose option if you want to log all the JSON RPC requests that are made to Ganache. Or on the contrary, if you want to have less logs, for example, if you're doing some continuous integration, then you can specify the quiet option. Next, if you want to get some help on all the command of Ganache, then you can use this option. And you can also check out the official documentation of Ganache CLI on the GitHub repo. By the way, if you want to learn how you can become a blockchain developer and get your first blockchain job like I did, I've prepared a short email course where I give you all my secrets. So to get access to this, just follow the link in the description. This is totally free. All right, so in this video, I've covered most of the useful features of Ganache CLI, but there's still one that I, that I haven't covered, and that is called the forking feature that allow you to copy the state of mainnet and import it locally, and that's very useful when you want to test your smart contract, and I'm going to show you this in the next video, so make sure to follow that one. If you have any question, write it in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye.